What's up everybody? Russ with rwgresearch.com here. So a lot of you, uh, and quantumgravityresearch.org. So a lot of you um, have watched my videos lately since I've been in the new shop here. And this has always been in the background. So the question for a lot of you is maybe what exactly is that? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you have every clue and you're still interested. That is a magnetizer. Now as you saw in my last video, all right, I used my uh, my own professional homemade capacitor bank impulse charger device. Okay, it works. It's a bit dangerous, um, but it can It is safe actually if you use it properly with the remote system I've got. But today we're going to find out a little bit more about that. Um, so this is a video of what is inside one of these professional magnetizers. Now the numbers on the front. That's a Z, or what is it? It's an MZM 3040. All right, now what is this? What does this mean? Um, so that's the model brand, whatever you want to call it. Um, doesn't really mean a whole lot. 30 is the amount of capacitance. 40, I'm sorry, 30 is the voltage. 40 is the capacitance. So that's 3000. Zero, zero, zero. 3,000 volts capacity at 400. Zero, zero. You had two zeros on the end of both. So 4,000 microfarads UF, 3,000 volts. Okay, that's the maximum that this machine will put out. Um, so let's see. Here we've got voltage. We've got uh, AC voltage, DC voltage, DC voltage, fault lamp, charge full light, discharge current. How many times this thing has been fired, in case you're interested, 244. We're about to make that a lot more. Start button, spare hole for added stuff. Now this is kind of interesting. You push this in, you set the dial where you want it, and you unclick it, and it sets the DC voltage for what you want to run. Um, same thing with the charge here. This is charge repeat, so if you click it in, it will constantly repeat. And then here you hit the magnetize button. Power switch. Uh, this is a 220 volt machine and um, we're going to open it up and see what's inside. Now, for those of you very interested, uh, 3040, okay, 3000 volts at 4000 microfarads or, or UF, um, that is 18,000 joules. My, uh, my capacitor bank over here is 10,000 joules. Um, it's a lower voltage, so it's, it's, a, it's a less rapid pulse time, where this machine is a very, uh, well, it, 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 depending on how you charge it, it is a higher charge, and so it will discharge faster, which means a faster impulse. So, let's tear this puppy open, let's see what's inside of it, let's see how it works. Alright, so we've got it open, and uh, this is what's inside of this bad boy. You've got um, the back of your panel here, all right, with all of your particular control knobs and buttons, inputs, IOs. That is running over here to a IO block. You have your input contactor and um, your fuses coming in. And here's your input, by the way. Comes in here to red, comes up up here, goes through here. Um, this right here is actually the circuit board that controls everything. This is a um, a macroprocessor of some kind. Um, it looks like they have... Oh uh, yeah, I really, really don't like it when people do this. Companies, I should say. It appears that they have scraped what was left of the numbers off the top of all of these chips. Isn't that horrible that they do that just so you can't replace them? It makes you call them. I can see some numbers on there almost looks like a mega anyway so um, so that is the circuit board that controls this thing some control transformers um, a little relay board um, not 100% sure what these devices do one of them probably a uh, uh, DC okay AC DC to converter right there that one on this side is and um, not quite sure what that board does that's okay. Then here you have another uh, control unit. This is probably a, uh, a relay unit, it looks. Um, and you got a little current limit here for input, for charge power, probably. 
So that's probably your charge contactor right there, that big one. Um, so that's the control side of it. Now let's get into the let's get into the meats of this bad boy. Um, so here we have a very large transformer. This is 220, um, and the way they've got 220 in America is the phasings off. So you've got two separate 120 volt cores, one on each side. Um, you have some small resistors here for uh, possibly charging. I'm not sure. On the other side over there, there is a contactor. It's really hard to see, but it's right there. On the back here, you've got some uh, charge and discharge resistors. These look really heavy gauge, and these look really fine gauge. So I'm assuming these might be charge, and those are probably discharge. That's my wild guess. Um, and here are the bad boy capacitors. Now these are all connected. Um, well, actually, they're flipped, I believe. Um... Oh, positive, positive. No, maybe they're alright. So they're all straight and parallel. So, yeah. These are some massive capacitors. Uh, let's see. Just for fun. Let's get our tape measure out. So these appear to be about 22 and 3 quarters tall. 4 and a half inches wide and about 15 inches wide that way. So those are some monsters, four of them. Now here, these two devices inside of here, this one and this one, those are actually SCRs. So those are silicon control rectifiers. And you can see they actually have water cooling ports on them. Now the water cooling system on these are not connected, but this machine's designed to run um, one impulse at a time for display or test purposes. So if you were to put this in a real world running application, constant magnetization, I would uh, water cool these puppies. But you can see there you've got a single wire going into the pin, one going into this side of the block, and then on the bottom side of here you have your, your two power connections, one on each side. These look like they're running in uh, almost in parallel or, or something. I really don't know how these are connected exactly. We'll see if we can find a a block diagram. Looks like right there there's a shunt and that's what those two wires go up there and uh, check the current discharge. So that's what's inside of one of these heavy-duty magnetizers. Um, now what I've got sitting on top is a water cooler. Okay. There's a jig right there. All right, it's a, it's a bigger one. This jig over here is, uh, is slightly smaller and um, this is what you'd see a standard just uh, magnetization coil, no special processes, just put your material in there, hook up your connection points, hook up your water cooling, energize and discharge. Um, these devices are a little bit different. Um, so you have a positive or a top plate and a, and a bottom plate, okay, and these are connected in such a way that uh, they magnetize in different fashions. I actually don't know 100% which way these two magnetize. One is actually and one is uh, um, the other direction. So I, I have to play with these like inner ring, outer ring for one of these and then top bottom for one of these I believe is how these magnetizing machines work. Um, I'll hook these up and play with them. Let's disconnect these guys so we can pull this out. Alright, this is what it looks like in here. So what you do is you drop your ring magnet in there and then inside of here, if we can see this, let's see if I can get this set up right. All right, you can see in there I'm a little shaky. Let me turn on the little control, make it a little smooth. All right, so inside here you can see the uh, the center iron core in there. So there's a coil wrapped around a core, and that core basically concentrates the flux into the center. Where this guy, I tried to take this apart actually and could not get this apart because it's glued together pretty well. So the construction is here is very similar. You've got a coil. Uh, I believe there's a core in here, but I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think there is. Um, I could drop a magnet in there and find out. But anyway, so yeah, that's it. That's what's inside of one of these bad boys. And uh, now we've got. Uh, 18,000 jewels to play with safely.
the connectors. This cord is all Chinese, so I'm not sure. I don't know what size they are. This is one hot cable I've got on here, so this appears to be about the same. So yeah, that's what's inside an impulse magnetizer. And I'll be using this in my upcoming tests, and uh, it shall be interesting. So, so uh, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to put in this video. Talk about some other stuff, but I'll leave it there. All right, Russ with RWGResearch.com, QuantumGravityResearch.org. Have a good day, and uh, hope you enjoyed. Check out my website for more. Peace.